<laughs> Are you seeing this? Like, there's a lot of black flies you out. You may or may not need some D. Yeah, like I a have a significant amount of D. I have some in my bag. I'll, I'll bust it. Yeah, let's bust it. Up. Like if you think about it, the good old stuff that in the little spill jar, you used to put on like that, right? You can also like put it on your face without spraying it in your eyes. Look, no bugs. So the black flies are out, and uh, I've recently started using Muscal 30% DEET lotion. I always use the spray, which I still think is good, but at first really, I was skeptical. It moisturizes at the same time yeah, it uh, like, gets rid of the bugs. At first I was skeptical, but after using this a few times, you can ration it so you get really more bang for your buck. I'm like, this stuff is amazing. Okay, here we go, baby. First canoe trip of the year. Got my man Kyle Loney over here, uh, and it's his first whitewater ca uh, canoe trip. He's a good bush guy, but he's jumping right into an advanced level whitewater river. The put in is right in my front yard, or is it my backyard? I don't know. Uh, yeah, backyard. 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 But it's called water frontage. But front, back. You know what? Anyways, it's right yard. on my property. <laughs> my house is right up there. We did have to start the day with the portage, carrying everything down to the water from the driveway. And uh, it is a beautiful day. It's about 8 a.m. And we have a pretty interesting trip today. On top of the first trip of the year, Kyle's first whitewater canoe trip, north, my dog's first ever canoe trip. There's a blacksmith that lives along a remote part of the Magnetowan River here. Uh, his business is called Adventure Forge. The guy's name's Chris Johnson. And I'm literally gonna stop in and go check out his shop and he's gonna you know, be making an axe, he's gonna be doing some blacksmithing work and I'm gonna buy an axe off of him that we are then going to use when we camp tonight. So, should be one night out, two days out, but they're gonna be long days, jumping right into an upper Magnetowan. It's gonna be an awesome trip and hopefully we hit some serious rapids. Totally soaked. Nice, nice, you wanna say anything? North! <laughs> yeah, and North has no idea how to get in and out of a canoe uh, it might be like I a feel like that's gonna be the biggest challenge we've got. Yeah, is making sure the dog yeah, is like, in the canoe. Yeah, for most of the trip. Yeah, so he's got a life jacket on, but he was like born in the fall. So the only time he saw water was in November, and he was about this big. So he's he's he he's goes in the water, but he's never even swum before. So should Funny be interesting. Story, though, I was yeah. also born in the winter, yeah. and I only saw water when I was this big. Yeah, well, it's still can't here. swim. Still can't yeah. swim. Forty years <laughs> yeah, later, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I need yeah. a life jacket. I need yeah. a life jacket. I think, yeah. uh, and also dogs, they just know how to swim. Hey, just, yeah. You know, Way like, I'm better not, than well, humans at actual yeah, survival. They just have like the, yeah. the instinct. You yeah, know, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. No, I, so. yep. We're also jumping right into a rapid right there. Yeah, I see that. North, in the boat, come on. In the boat. In the boat. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Pretty good. I should have yelled a draw way earlier to you though. What? Because we almost smoked that rock. We handled it well. Yeah. And then North almost tipped us. Well, we didn't actually almost tip, but. So good, good first uh, run though, eh? That was nice. Yeah, it was definitely a lot bigger than it looked from uh, the shore, eh? Oh yeah. Oh, that was fun. Uh, yeah, so ideally, I mean, there's probably the best way to do it, Kyle, would be, you see that rock right there? Yeah, yeah. 
and you see this yeah. here yeah would be right in between those two things stay right of that rock there yeah Go and the then, right on that side. yeah, but we should go down and check a bit more down there too. All right. So I'm going to try to teach North to uh, run around the rapid and meet us at the end. He did extremely well. I was surprised he even got into the canoe to begin with. But I'm going to try to show him where to where to sit. Sit. We're going to go get in the canoe. We're gonna meet you right here, okay, buddy? We're gonna meet you right here, okay? So what you know what happened there is we started when we had when you cross rod we got we turned right but we turned too far right yeah yeah you know we hit the first part absolutely perfect in the boat in north in the boat in the boat okay back in the boat good boy that's a good boy first time ever doing this eh oh what a beauty Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, draw. Yeah, because when the current hits you, it always wants to flip you up river, right? That was pretty good. All right, so now we have uh, a, a safe takeout where you saw the guided group yeah. and a not safe takeout. I say we take the not safe one. Yeah, let's take the not safe. Well, let's but let's let North out first here. Over here. All right, give her a bit of a back paddle. Slow us down a bit. I'm gonna see if North is gonna ride forward. You see if North wants to uh, jump out here. Good boy, I trained him in and out of the boat at my cottage last weekend. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna have to eddy out. We'll probably maybe back ferry into the eddy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, or, so we might just back paddle, or you might uh, have to cross draw into it. Tell me what you want, buddy. Yeah. We're just gonna try to keep our like stern kind of pointed into shore. It's a waterfall up here, right? Eh? Yeah. So that's our, that's our takeout on the right. Looks pretty so back paddle. All right, hard, harder back paddle. That's it, that's it. That's it. Okay, this is it. All right. All right, couple hard back paddle strokes. Strokes. Right here? Okay? Yeah. Oh, jump out. Oh, it's deep here. I did that on purpose. <laughs> Alright, jump out and grab the, grab the bow. Yeah, I got you. I got you. That's the beauty of having a drive suit. Yeah, just let the back swing around. Yeah, you got it. Let me just grab that. So far, so good. Uh, I haven't paddled uh, tandem in like literally years. I, I started paddling tandem, I started paddling so, uh, then I started paddling solo. So I kind of am a bit late at yelling out draw or cross draw to Kyle on a couple occasions. 
Uh, but for the most part, yeah, we ran that technical uh, class too. We hit the first part perfectly, of course, the part that we actually took time to scout. And then the second part, we had to get right. We got a little too far right and we started going for basically a ledge that we probably would have run right up on. So I had to do... Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun actually, but we dodged I it. I did a big... I actually switched sides, which I don't usually do, just so I could do a really strong pry and skated past that, hit some fun waves, and North just met us right at the end of the rapid. Incredible, like, I'm, I, was, I was concerned to bring him out because he's a puppy and he doesn't have much experience with the water, but I've never seen a dog this good right off the hop before in my life. So that's awesome, Kyle's having fun. We're all having fun. Right now we're gonna portage a gorgeous, basically a waterfall, raging rapid that's in a canyon here. It's going to be a fairly short portage, but not a particularly easy one. So, so far, so good. Haven't dumped yet, you know? We're not going to dump. Uh. Now we got a bit of flat water and then uh, we have a real doozy, the one that I might have to solo. Yeah. Oh! Whoa! Bad dog! Guard! Bad dog! In the boat, North! What the f is he chasing? A frog? Good boy! Come on, boy! North, in the boat! In the boat, come on. North, in the boat, in the boat, come on. Come on, in the boat, in the boat. Come on, come on, North, up you get. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, that was funny, eh? You should have seen that. He just went for it. I can do it. We are just approaching Ross Rapid, which is a real doozy. Uh, so we got to jump out and scout. It's, it's basically sort of like a straight shot. If you line it up, it's just basically massive waves. Then you gotta get left hard to avoid some boulders and you can do it. But it's just the kind of thing that might be not possible to do tandem because it's such an abrupt wave that you just take that wave right on top of you and fill up your boat in one shot, even with the spray deck. But we're gonna get out and have a look at it and see what we're dealing with. But uh, yeah, solid class three coming up. No problem. Look at the drop. Look at how high it is here. We'll see. It's different at every water level. Like, don't worry. Come on.
Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it looks pretty intense. It's just so big that running in tandem, too much weight in the bow, we definitely swamp and dump. So I'm gonna try doing it solo and we also might swamp and dump, or I might swamp and dump. So uh, Kyle's gonna just uh, walk it. I'm gonna just hopefully make it down solo and the him and North are gonna meet me at the end. So uh, fingers crossed I get there with the uh, open side up. the big one but was, buddy it looked like a piece of cake yeah well I mean that's the difference between running it solo too right yeah 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 you know like it wasn't it wasn't a piece of cake because the tricky part is the lineup but as long as you hit it right off the beginning you're good as long as you know how to brace yeah you're good but if you miss that tongue at the beginning you know you run you're, you're gonna you're gonna be going for a nice swim put it that way North come here Come here, back of the boat, back of the boat. Good boy. Nice. Oh yeah, there's something here. Where are we gonna hit this? Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe middle. Let's get over to the right. Looks like there could be some rocks on the left here. Here we go, buddy. This is a, a long kind of like swift that leads right up to an unrunnable ledge. Yeah. So we have to stay hard left and eddy out right before the ledge or we go over and dump and maybe get injured. Okay. So we just got to, we got to take her slow down the left basically. Should be okay. And then we'll just, we'll have to do a little carry over a really short portage maybe. Okay. You're steering the boat, brother. All right, back paddle. Might, we might skip over a few rocks. Yeah, keep back paddling. Do a sweep, you know, an open face sweep. Yes, buddy, harder. Yes. See that? All right, see that back ferry action? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna kind of you don't want to get, okay, forwards. All right, sweep, back sweep. Yeah, oh, 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 oh cross, cross. Oh. I didn't see that, but good. Uh, Maybe you stayed a little too far. All right, back paddle. Back sweep, sweep. Get that bow over to the left. Nice. Nice. Okay, right, now just back paddle. That's it. Just take her nice and slow. All right, keep back paddling. See that little kind of frothing bit of, of white water on the left? Yeah. We're gonna try to just get left of that. There might be some rocks there and then pull the bow into that eddy and then spin back up river. So, paddle forwards. <laughs> Fun, eh? Oh yeah. 
Eddying out above a waterfall is always exciting. <laughs> always a good time, buddy. So we're gonna do a short portage here and then run the rapid afterwards. So far, so good. No dumps yet. Uh, Kyle's having a blast. North is like blowing me away. I can't believe he's doing as well as he is. He's, you know, not the best. He's kind of jumping from side to side in the boat a bit. It's feeling tippy and we are in a whitewater boat, which is maneuverable, but tippier uh, typically. So, but you know, he's not in the rapids with us, so no problem. But uh, yeah, so this is basically what we just eddied out right on top of. It doesn't look like a whole lot from upriver, but when you come down and look at it, you can just see that boiling hole where the white water's backing up on itself. It's all frothy, and there's just no way you can get down it. Wow. Taking a little lunch break here. A little pemmican? I made some um, blueberry mousse pemmican, and this time I used uh, lard instead of tallow. I think it's better. Not as hard, it's softer, but. Delicious. Mm. It's, uh, it's equal parts, dried pulverized blueberries, dried pulverized moose meat, and lard, all blended together. What do you think, North? You like pemmican? North. Good boy. You having fun, North? You having fun, bud? You having fun? Yeah. North, you're gonna have to North. You're gonna have to run all the way around. All the way around and meet us down there. Jump. Yeah, jump in. Alright, pull up pull it out a bit more first. Oh, there they are. I told you they catch up to us. North! No, I, I'm hoping that he comes back. I might have to run back and get him. Worst comes to worst. No. Are they talking to me? What's that? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe. <laughs> I think we could probably make it. Alright, paddle hard. Okay, hard, hard. Okay, draw, draw. Alright. Alright, Eddie out left. Forward, forward. Forward, forward. Nice. Good. Good boy! Good boy. 
Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. In the boat. In the boat. In the boat. Oh, you got a lot of water on the back of your 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 your, your spine. <laughs> no, no. Come here. Come here, bud. Come here. Good boy. Sick run, bro. Sick run. Oh, good. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. The waves were crazy, but it was it was like pretty technical to get. You know, you see what I'm saying? How it's like always like, oh yeah, we'll get right, and then you just almost don't. It's like that's how that one always is. That one was awesome. Yeah. So we might hit some more like squirrely boils and whirlpools right after this. We get through this V. So we'll just paddle through them hard. That's the kind of thing that could f you, though, eh? Oh, big time. Unsuspectingly. <sighs> we pull up just straight up there. Yeah. Okay, North. Out of the car. Out of the car. Out, Out of the, the truck. there at the bottom on the bottom left if we hit that run it left to that it's gonna be fun man right down there but we should go yeah. look from up here because actually there's a rock there and if we go over that we're gonna be pretty full of water but we're not gonna dump them North, good boy. That was freaking wicked. With the big eddy out finish, like a hundred mile an hour across the boils. Just decided to uh, pull over and just give a quick bail. We are super impressed with how good North is being. This is his first time, and he just automatically knows to run around the rapid, meet us right at the end. Amazing, jumps right on the canoe and uh which he did here after an epic run me and kyle were a little worried about this one because there's some big waves it's pretty tight through a canyon technical uh but we just nailed it punched through a curling wave paddled hard dodged a huge hole turned hard found a tongue bombed through it split a boulder in a raging boiling hole and it hit some crazy current and then eddied out hard on the right like absolutely freaking nail it so fun it was think, awesome dude that was absolutely one of the best runs I've ever done. That was so much fun. So Loved good, it. eh? Loved it. Nice. Good time. We are about 4K out from Adventure Forge, which is the blacksmith's place around Maple Island. Uh, no more real rapids in between here and there, so we're just gonna paddle it out and uh, 
you know, maybe uh, grab a bite to eat there and go and pick up this axe uh, from the blacksmith's place. Uh, he, the guy lives right on river, his, on, on the river, his forge is right on the river there. So we're going to check out his operation for a bit and uh, buy an axe and uh, move on our way. So we still have more rapids to go today as well before getting to camp. Oh yeah, there's some rapids. Middle left side. Right up the bail. You want to avoid this kind of hole on the left. Yep. Officially cooled off now. So there is Chris, the blacksmith. He's got an old timey canoe, he's a blacksmith. He likes the old ways. What kind of uh, wood canvas is that? Oh, sweet. Okay, so we are just here with Chris Johnson and he's the owner of Adventure Forge up here on the Magneto on a Maple Island. Pretty cool, I just paddled to Chris's house from my house and coming up to pick up an axe. But uh, Chris, so why don't you uh, share a little bit about what it is you do about Adventure Forge and what you guys offer. Yeah, about three years ago I decided to quit my corporate job and do blacksmithing full time, which was a hobby before that. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. For three years I've been making fireplace tools and axes and hatchets and tomahawks and uh, yeah. Yeah, building a little business for myself, doing the markets and selling cool. online. Cool. Where can people buy, uh, find your, your products and find the stuff that you make? I've got a website, which is yeah. my initial cjblacksmith.ca yeah. and uh, you can find pretty much everything there. Otherwise you can find me on Instagram, Adventure Forge, uh, at Adventure underscore Forge. At Adventure underscore Forge. And on Facebook, it's just Adventure Forge, all one word. Oh, oh, I didn't know you had Facebook too. So Facebook Adventure Forge, and then uh, and then what's Instagram again? Adventure underscore Forge. Adventure underscore Forge on Instagram. Cool. And so you could, somebody could pick up an axe like the one that I'm getting from you today, right? Yep. They're, they're on my website. They're mostly made to order. Everything, pretty much everything I'll do on that kind of yeah. scale will be made to order. Um, I'll have a little bit of stock for the markets this year. Yeah. So sweet. So yeah, Chris, uh, I mean, I guess we kind of have something in common in that way that we sort of like just went with the, the, our passions in life and live where we want to live and, and are making stuff work, you know what I mean? So I think it's uh, not enough people do it. Not enough That's people do it. And guess what? Look at what we're doing. What day is it today? Monday, Tuesday? I mean, who cares? Tuesday. Tuesday and what here we're it? working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're working right now, right? So yep. it's a pretty good life, man. Yeah, not sure. as easy as it might be cracked up to be for something, but you know what I mean. Money's not everything. No, exactly, exactly. So right on. Okay, cool. So what are you gonna are you gonna show us? Uh, are you gonna make some stuff today, or are you gonna? Yeah, I'm working work? on a set of fireplace tools right now, and yeah. um, so I'm just gonna attach the base, which I made. I'm gonna attach that base to the upright, which holds the, the three tools. It's the one for this set.
It nice. works! Of course it works. So what's that that you're that you're controlling there, Chris? Well, I've got an uh, old school uh, hand blower, but this is a little more convenient, albeit a little bit more dangerous because if somebody calls and I leave my steel in the fire, I yeah. can come back and it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, it just saves some time. I can... so, so it's a bilge. Uh, no, it's a blower. Or not blower. Uh, what's the a word? Uh... It's actually a, a vent fan from a greenhouse, I believe. Oh, cool. Blows air across uh, the bellows. Coast, make it, yeah, bellows. bellows. Bellows, yeah. So in the old days, they would have had the big bellows that they would pull down from the ceiling. Yeah. And uh, then they went to these these ones here, probably, I'm going to guess 1900 or something like that. Kyle, what do you think? I think this so freaking cool. Right? Yeah, this is awesome. I told you this is gonna be cool. I love it, man. We will put that aside for now, and then we can hang this ax. I'm gonna do a heat treat on it, but I've got this ax. So this is the smallest uh, Hudson's Bay ax that I do. It's about a pound and a third. Um, it's been forged and rough filed to shape, and now we're gonna do a heat treat on it, and then we're gonna hang it on a handle. Okay, so what, what's a heat treat? Uh, basically, uh, certain steels have enough carbon in them that you can harden them. So this being a forklift tine, uh, recycled forklift tine, so probably a 4340. And um, that means it has 0.4 carbon in it, which is enough to, it's a medium carbon steel. It's enough to make a good tough ax, but it's not gonna be brittle. Um, should hold up well. Awesome. You heat treat in oil or water? Oil. Yeah. The quenching steels are plain tool steels, so 1045, uh, 1090, 1075, 1084, those are all water hardening steels. Most modern tool makers don't water quench anything because there's always a risk of water quench. Yeah. It could crack. Um, or if you sharpen the blade, if you don't leave it pretty blunt, that sharp edge could propagate a crack. Uh, Those are my templates. Template, okay. So this is your big boy. Okay, okay. <laughs> what is that, a two pound? Oh, two, two, two it's actually five? closer to two and three quarter pound. Okay, okay. Yeah. Big boy. I think I can handle that. Look at this top one, eh? That's a real old pioneer thing. Yeah, the so broad don't, axe. Yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't quote me on the history here, but that axe was made by a blacksmith, Samuel Lount. And if you look him up, he was hung. He was oh. a, a rebel in the against the... British government, I guess. Yeah. In and they hung him in Toronto. Hmm. Wow. And a friend of mine has an original one of his axes, so I took a tracing of it for hewing logs. For hewing logs, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like just squaring them. Squaring the yeah. face of okay. the log. Yeah. Okay. You stand yeah. on top of the log and. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Not too many people hew logs anymore. No. We've all just gotten so soft. A lot easier to solve. <laughs> <laughs> so soft. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's a cool shot there. Did you want me to do it again? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you missed it? I was in photo mode. Yeah, it's probably good enough, actually. Oh, that looks like a perfect quench. It smells phenomenal. It smells like french fries. Yeah. What I'm doing now is just brightening that up a little bit so we can see the temper colors. And with an axe, you want a pretty dark straw. It's getting there pretty quick, actually. Is allow the heat to travel back into the to the bit, and the changing colors sort of an indication that we're at the right temperature. And, and, and dark straw is probably where I would leave something like this, um, almost going to change to a purple color. And um, and then we use the water to arrest that, basically just freeze it at that point. Don't right. let it get too hot, because the hotter and hotter it gets, it'll just start to bring um, the rock wall hardness down. Right. So it would would that be considered something like tempering? That is tempering. Yeah. 
Cool. But drawing it back is temporary. Very cool. So what are you looking for right now? Basically looking for that shined up area there to turn to like a, a golden, dark golden color, a straw color. This is it here. So because that's getting its temperature, cool that half of the bit down so it doesn't get any hotter than that. And we'll wait for this end to catch up. I love the shape of that accent. Yeah, it's a classic. Beautiful. Classic design. You know Beautiful. what's great about it? Is so you can choke up on the axe yeah. and then actually carve with it. Yeah, you know? it's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. We're going to put a handle on this power and a third Hudson Spade, a small, small lanyard. Mm. So you're just popping a hole in it there? Yeah, so we put a lanyard holding the handle, and then one of the problems is when the drill comes through, it breaks out, and you see you get those little burrs, and then if you try to countersink that, because you're going to want to countersink it, mm -hmm. it's going to break out even worse. So what you do is take a piece of sandpaper and put it over top of the hole, like that. Sweet. That's how they do it, eh? This one will be 260 on my website after we get the handle finished up. And, uh, it'll look nice and dark like yours. We're going to use an aquafortis finish on it, which is a traditional method of finishing wood, which they would have used on a flintlock rifle. Cool. I just picked that uh, tip up from a friend of mine, and uh, yeah, you're going to be impressed when you see the color of this changes. To Basically, you have acid with iron dissolved into it, and then yeah. introduce heat. I think it's ferric chloride with uh, iron dissolved in it. This is awesome. The gunsmith. Pass the gun stock underneath the red hot metal and the blacksmith to hold it. So basically, if you're on the edge of the anvil like that, half on, and then you see it steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made this handle from scratch too because I couldn't, he didn't have any of this size. Okay. 
So, I imagine I probably burned rough. myself multiple times. Look at that, bud. Are you happy with that cow? Chris, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Feel how light it is. Like, it's beautiful. Wow. You know, it's not that much lighter than my Grand Force. I, admit, I weighed my yeah. Grand Force. It's supposed to be a pound and a half, and it's more like a pound and a third. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is just going to be a better split. It's, it's light, but it's just... You can perfect. just tell you do some damage with this. Yeah, yeah. So, Chris is donating this hat. So, I guess it's technically a hat today. Yep. So, um, Tori's running something called Camp for a Cure. Check out Camp for a Cure on Instagram, and where uh, people bid for cool things like this. And this is a vintage ax, and uh, Chris um, fitted this really nice handle on it, and he is donating this to Camp for a Cure. So, um, you can bid on this. You can bid on this ax, go to Camp for a Cure on Instagram. All proceeds go to Fox G1 Research Foundation. Um, that's a, a, a rare syndrome that our son Wesley has. And so we're doing a bit of a fundraiser to try to look for a cure for that. So check out Camp for a Cure and you can have this ax. This one here is a two and a half pound Hudson Bay ax. And that on a is, inch handle. this is why we stopped. 24 inch handle, eh? Yep. So yeah, two and a half pound Hudson's Bay axe, 24 inch handle, and this is about the best axe you can have. It was good enough for the Voyageur. Voyageur should be good enough for me. Yep. And that's what the, the Voyageurs basically would carry. I was traded for the Hudson's Bay Company. Not too big um, uh, and more more uh, uh, more deadly. Does does the job better than a smaller hatchet, but yet it's not as heavy and bulky as a full size axe. So that's what... Uh, the Voyageurs carried, so that's going to be the about the perfect thing for my canoe trips. I hope it works so, out good. For you. Yeah, and that's one of the things Chris offers too. You can uh, so you can pick this up uh, from Adventure Forge too, and you could be as cool as me. Probably not, but close. You know, <laughs> this Hudson Bay axe was found on the shore of Lake Abitibi. Whoa! It's probably 200 years plus old. You can see it's been sharpened, really well sharpened. It's wrought iron. And it would have had a steel bit in it, but this would have been something you would have got at the Hudson's Bay Company. Very cool. And um, so you can see the line I used. Uh huh. Exact same is, line. Is the same line. And yeah. imagine just project that bit out to a four-inch bit. Yeah. And so would this bit have come out quite a bit further than? Yeah. It's it really would. just corroded and been sharpened down. Sharpened down. Likely wow. they got behind the steel edge. This is wrought iron. Yeah. With a steel edge welded in. Yeah. So likely they got behind the steel edge, and then it really wouldn't last long. That like is that. awesome. So you basically use a legit artifact, we call it. Yep. Uh, you know, of an actual 200-year-old Hudson's Bay axe found on the shores of Lake Abbey Tibby to make this. So it doesn't get much more authentic than that. That's cool. Man, I bet it's cool just the way it is. I bet you kind of half want to refurbish it though, eh? <laughs> I but don't think it would hold up. No, but it probably is more interesting like that. Anyways, yeah, yeah. thanks for showing me that, man. For sure. Yeah, this is exciting. Well, she didn't make it. She paid something to make it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Look at that. Awesome. So it's bound to get a scratch on it sooner. What are you doing? Don't be swimming in the water up here. You can also run it here. There's some water pushing through here, but you know, you're taking some water and that's a rock there. So I guaranteed line up with this tongue. And then honestly, I just run it straight. Stay to the left. Like almost hug that shoreline.
Looks like he should uh, portage the other side. Maybe portage back on that side, because look at this. Oh, he nailed it. Nailed it. Chris joined us uh, going down river from his place there after working his blacksmith shop and uh, couldn't resist to run the rapid with us, so he bombed that in his uh, old uh, chestnut bob special but now he's got a portage back up up a mountain because it's like a canyon here to get back to his house so let's get that dog in here north i was quite impressed with that buddy yeah good luck man thanks a lot hey eh? we'll see you thank you come on north Just let him maybe even get on just and walk past you. Okay, in the boat. In the boat. In the boat. In the boat. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. You're good. You're good. Come on. You're good. You're good. You're good. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, North. Good boy. Okay, maybe down further. Okay. Oh, there you go. Come on, man. Oh, good boy. boy. Yeah, good boy. 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 Okay, lie down. Let's see if we can get you working on that. It's okay, Rowdy. You want us to bring him over? It's okay, boy. It's okay. I might be a show. Hey? In the boat, up again. In the boat. In the boat, come on. Down. Both of you. Alright, just paddle straight. No, nothing fancy here. That's what you call a doggy paddle. Okay, north. North. Oh, that couldn't have felt good. North! Fuck! North! Leave it! North! North! North, leave it! Good boy! North, good boy! Leave it! Good boy! Good boy, North! Leave it! Good boy! Good boy! Come on, in the boat! In the boat! Good boy, come on, come on! Good boy, good boy! So, you see how well it works to say good boy before he comes? Yeah. Yeah. Looks amazing. Yeah. Good boy, lie down! Lie down! Good boy! So another little fun run, not too not too challenging, but uh, a lot of fun there. And uh, Chris joined us for a bit, and we actually had to uh, ferry his dog back across the river. He thought he was going to be able to eddy out right and portage back on the right, but it was just a freaking bunch of boulders and a canyon cliff. So we uh, brought his dog over to the other side, which is a bit of a shit show, having North and the other dog on top of the canoe. But uh, he did pretty well, so was, I'm sure that was fun. So a really fun part of the day for sure. Now we're just approaching Upper Burnt Chute, which is a waterfall um, that we will not be able to run. So we got to be careful here as we approach it. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, after that, there's a really fun rapid that's like a challenging class three that we may may dump on. Um, so still some stuff to do here before getting to camp.
a nice little flat spot down here we're gonna hit. All right, monsieur. I don't see. It's always easier when you find the trail that you're supposed to be on. Which, fortunately enough, I was able to direct Jim towards. Mm, God. I just got a couple grams of protein there from black flies that I inhaled. That was nice. I was just I was just mentioning to your fans though, Jim, how it, like you always volunteer to carry the canoe. Yeah. It's like one trip, 85 pounds, and then you send the pack horse to do 300 pounds of gear, two trips. Yeah, okay. Do you want to try carrying the canoe next time? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Well, I'll try carrying the canoe. Welcome to try I will. I'll do it. There's that one big standing. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah, but the, then it just get, it gets real fucked. I see it right down. Yeah, like this is this part's pretty good, but this the it's down there that's that's good. This yeah. is like the easy part. We gotta walk oh this is bigger down here. We gotta walk pretty far to scout this one out. Cause it's like a slot canyon and there's like a, a long 150 meter class two before it turns into a raging class three. Uh, we probably could have eddied out here, bud. But whatever, we didn't know that, you know? I, I, we're gonna have to walk to there to scout. I'm uh, unfortunately, I know. Yeah, so we have to do a long walk to scout. But next time, I'll, I'll know just to f***ing come to here. This is the meaty part. Yeah, like this is this part's pretty good, but this the, it's down there that's that's good. This yeah. is like the easy part. I have nowhere else to be today. We might as well scout it out. Right, exactly. Right. That curling wave, that's what those guys dumped on last time. And that's what gave me some issues. I can't I was alright. Stay right, yeah, and then just hit the hit so the, like, down. the thing is though, you see this wave that's like that. Yeah. We don't want to hit that because that's gonna try to. Yeah. So if we could try to avoid that yeah. and just literally just bomb right into this, yeah. you know, yeah. okay. and then hit it straight. But like, okay, okay, you see down there. Come yeah. here, hit your right again. Come up to here. Come up to here. Mm. 
You see at the base of this big rock, you see that you see that f***ing boiling eddy? That's f***ing, you're done if you go in there. Yeah. Get right. Okay, four tart, tart. Pretty fast. Left. Get left. Yeah. Just bombed it, eh, buddy? That was wicked, bud. Woo! Just bombed it. We didn't slow down really, maybe a bit. Forts? <laughs> that was wicked. That was awesome, awesome man. man. That was a good one. That was fing easier than the last one, eh? Oh yeah. The, oh, the yeah. technical one, but more fun. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's get in over there. Probably should bail too. Eh? Oh, absolutely. I'm <laughs> I'm knee deep in water right now. That last wave was oh, huge. Eh? Hammered me. Just paddled around a corner and we see our campsite. Awesome day on the water. Um, it's labeled on the map as Lower Burnt Shoot, which is kind of ridiculous because, as far as I'm concerned, I remember it being like a class one. So maybe that mark is supposed to be meant for the raging waterfalls and canyons that we have to portage around endlessly first thing in the morning tomorrow. Not too sure. But, uh, Super happy with uh, the time we made, even being able to go hang out with Chris and the blacksmiths and getting away. We didn't, you know, we left at a pretty civilized hour on the water by about eight, maybe quarter after. And uh, yeah, made it to our campsite. Won't be dark for probably about another hour and 15 minutes or more. So plenty of time to get set up and get swarmed by black flies. dead uh, ash tree, unfortunately killed by the invasive emerald ash borer. So 
So this is a MSR remote three-man tent. It's got four poles, super heavy-duty, bomb-proof mountaineering tent. Nice. Yeah, I've never set it up before, so it might be there might be a bit of bungling happening here. I like to put the vestibule actually at the back and go in the other side because I don't like crawling for 10 miles so every time I get another set. This is a pretty quick <laughs> I knew it was going. We feed North First Made Pet Food. Um, he's still on uh, First Made High Performance. It's a Canadian brand out of BC. And um, North is sponsored by them. Yes, North is sponsored. He's eight months old and he has a sponsor. But uh, really, I looked around at different, different companies um, that would fit the needs of my dog. And I found that these guys would be the best one north is starving and um yeah and uh, he loves the food and luckily they they wanted to work with north north there's a few phone calls for north a few emails um i gave him a few pointers but he landed the sponsorship deal first mate really pet foods it. yeah he did crush it so yeah first mate pet foods great choice to feed your canine best buddy and north sure deserves a good meal Buddy, they're gonna be phenomenal. Oh, steaks. How about this tomahawk, though? Sick. Look at that uh, browning that's on the wood. Agawa Boreal 24, so that's a 24 inch blade. Check out that blade, it's got no rakers, amazing for cutting dry firewood, and watch this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's our hand right there. Did you cut that? Yep. This is. Good boy. Yeah, boy. Get That's got to burn down before I cook steaks on it. Good boy. Good boy.
Little steak. How is it? She's rare, but she's beautiful. Nice. That's how I like it. Mmm. Chef's kiss. Nice. Yep. Is that good? some gear I'm getting hammered. Oh by bugs. Yep. Let the bug go? Uh oh, I think I'm just gonna put on some cool pants. Oh that's a good idea. Well, it is probably pushing 11. Had a delicious uh, meal of good old meat and potatoes, a couple medallion steaks, and uh, some uh, potatoes I cooked up in the in the fire. And uh, awesome day today. Um, awesome, awesome day today. Got on the water about eight, maybe quarter after eight. Uh, uh, first couple of runs were, you know, some class twos with, with some, you know, some challenges and uh, uh, Kyle did really well. He's a strong paddler but not never really done the white water. But, you know, I was maybe a little rusty first trip of the season too and I've done so much uh, <coughs> solo paddling in the last while. I haven't paddled, ta paddled tandem as much, uh, you know, calling out uh, strokes and stuff like that. Um, I don't need to do that when I'm solo. Uh, so your first couple runs were a little not the best. The first one I ran with North in the boat too. And uh, so yeah, they were a little sketchy. We had no real issues, but you know, we almost smoked a boulder and a couple times and stuff like that. But then we started getting uh, things really dialed in um, and sort of working as a team a little bit more. Kyle's draws, cross draws uh, got you know much more effective after that and uh we yeah it was it was awesome we got to, had a, a portage today uh bumped into another group um uh, there doing the river but uh they're not they're doing it in three days so we just passed them uh we're doing it in two and uh yeah then ran uh, cody's rapids which was technical um had to pull off a couple miraculous turns dodge some interesting uh obstructions and super super fun and then uh, the rapid proceeding upper burnt chute was a blast pretty short portage and then just like super long rapid over 200 meters long and the bottom of it is a solid class three really irregular waves started pitching us left and right bombed over them kept going just hammered some huge waves big spray in the air everything you want for an action-packed white water run so that was a blast and <laughs> Um, of course, uh, seeing Chris Johnson at Adventure Forge in uh, near Maple Island was really, really cool. It was really exciting just to kind of, um, you know, we a lot of people don't realize that we've lost touch with how th things are made. So just to see him fabricate axe heads and, um, you know, the, the fireplace uh, stuff he was making. And Kyle obviously was super pumped, got right in there, um, started hammering out some steel. Got yeah, really fun hanging out with Chris and picked up my... Uh, two and a half pound Hudson Bay axe, got a 24 inch handle. So that is gonna be my go-to axe uh, for my canoe trips. Um, you know, I, I mean, I have a couple other axes I like too, but yeah, that's about perfect, especially for, for later season too. Um, it does have a bit of a heavier head uh, when I need to be splitting wood, it's gonna be great. Kyle liked it so much, he bought uh, a smaller size um, Hudson Bay axe, uh, almost like a hatchet, we can call it, uh, off of Chris too, which he's really stoked about. I'm just happy to, that he was there and, and part of the making of it um, and, and the treatment to the handle, sitting the, the axe head on the handle and all that. Super cool to just watch and be a part of and uh, I think actually probably the the most exciting aspect of the day um, 
is how great North did. I almost wasn't even gonna bring him because I thought, well, maybe this will be too much. You know, this white water trip, he's not really comfortable around water and just, I don't want to bite off more than we can chew. I should, you know, let him into it more gingerly and, you know, uh, get him into a canoe. He's only, this is like only second time in a canoe. He's only eight months old. And, uh, but then I thought about it and, you know, I'm like, well, you know, nobody was at home. It would've, he would have been home alone for a long time. So I thought, well, you know, I'll put a life jacket on him and, We'll just uh, be safe and, and fortunately he's really good at coming when he's called. He knows the commands in the boat, out of the boat, because I taught him that um, in a motorboat at my, my parents' place at, uh, uh, last weekend. Um, so he knows that and, you know, he knows, okay, well, he sees us paddling, he looks at the rapid, he says, well, I don't want to swim in that. So what he what does he do? Just his instinct to stay with his, his pack as he runs along the shore. And a couple times it took him a bit to find us because it was tricky, the, the route for him to get to, you know, from where we started paddling to where we ended. And I just whistled and of course he's got such a good sense of smell and, and good ears and he could just smell us and hear us. And sure enough, he would just show up every time. What a good dog. So I'm super, super proud of North and can't wait to bring him on some more trips as well. Time for bed. Well, here we go, there's my new tent. Uh, gotta say, I'm not really a big fan of this bag um, because it takes a long time to kind of do up these straps. I'd rather just have a, a, a regular kind of stuff bag, but overall, it's not a big deal and uh, really looks like a bomb proof tent so decided to make this my main tent for my big trips. That's sit for a minute, maybe Expert. two. But hey, listen, I like a good strong coffee. You know, I need it. I need it to really hit me in the back of the in the, of the throat. You know what I mean, Jim? Advanced bushcrafting with Kyle Loney. Absolutely, <laughs> flip flops and deer pajamas and all. <laughs> Did you know how much creams in creamer? It was zero. Isn't that gross? Apparently, it just turns to plastic in your body, and it's like full of like trans fats and. Basically, they they pulled it off the state, off the shelves in the states because it's so bad for you. They made tried to make it illegal, but like they won some court battle and back to pumping plastic for everyone. Thanks. Fifteen black flies in my coffee. Um, the black flies are not horrifically bad, um, but uh, they're not ideal. Yeah, they're not ideal. So I'm gonna try this. Usually, you know, I would break out my thermosel at times when they're like more of a cloud. But, uh, you know, why, why try to be a hero out here, you know? Um, so, I'm gonna pop this thing on, I, and these things, they work great. Bug spray, uh, in, my, in my opinion, uh, bug spray and, and thermocells and all that work better against mosquitoes. But, poof, this thing works great against black flies too. Basically what you do is you take this uh, sheet, synthetic, Cristantium plant extract in there. That's the active thing. I swap out this uh, cartridge. It's a butane cartridge. They actually have new ones that run off batteries too. Yeah, so this just pops in the bottom there. You tighten that up. Give it a good twist. Pop that back on. And then you turn this on. You press the ignite button. And uh, yeah, then you just set that up next to where you're having your coffee, next to where you're cleaning your fish. It's funny, uh, the, the biggest thing when I started using these, the biggest testimony for me was that I found my dog was always lying beside it. We'd set it up and I'd go doing stuff and every day after day my dog would be lying beside it. So he didn't know what a thermosel is, he just knew where the least amount of bugs were and that was by this, so. Yepers. <laughs> Whoa, that's a, that's a strong cup, Kyle. How much did you put in there for Christ's sake? I love it, Jim. I love it. I mean, 
Absolutely. Crushed some rapids. Still gutted about having you solo the first one and you filmed yeah. it. Yeah, but sorry about that. But such is life. No, no, you don't have to apologize. It's okay. It's probably better I didn't die on the first rapid. Right. Yeah. You know. It keeps your confidence higher, you know? Yeah, no. It, yeah, mm. exactly. And Chris was awesome. Yeah, you know, seeing the uh, the blacksmith at work and actually getting to move some steel around with him was uh, was wicked. Got a sweet axe out of it. So I mean, really, right now, Jim, I'd probably go with a solid nine and a half out of ten on this trip. Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, um, yeah. So good, good little night last night. Great little feed. Super, super fun. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna basically pack our stuff up. I'm gonna throw, get some oatmeal in me and uh kind of hit the water and yeah should be a fun day i'm not as intense i'm a little disappointed there's no rapids today but it's probably good to get that you know as much out of the way for you leave your last yeah. day to not be too hard right yeah, yeah. So. please bottle okay yeah sure. It's great. Look how, look how far the water has dropped yeah. in one day. Wow, that's a lot. Look at this waterfall on the right, bud. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. yeah, I did not see that. Very cool. And there is where we camped last night. And this here is lower burnt chute that we have to portage around. Just drops like crazy. Is where's the trail? Oh, yeah, look, just do this up here. Yeah, that's a trail. All right, yeah. up here. <laughs> look, you're gonna jump out, then I'm gonna jump out, and then we're gonna fucking haul up there north, right here. You see him just run by us without seeing us.
wearing my life jacket for this portage. Freaking, it's making me way too hot. Tough going. It's my second break, but this trail's rugged up and down, tough to follow, but I wanted to go uh, have a look at uh, Lower Burnt Chute in the canyon there, so I put the canoe down for a bit and went and checked it out. Very cool. Now I got a big dip like this down up, so pretty challenging. And there's more interesting stuff to come still. Got to suck some wind here. Oh yeah, oh okay, there it is. A little slippery. That's a good way to start the morning. Get the blood flowing. Get a good sweat on. I have to go for a swim. Crazy view of the waterfall from here. The last drop in Lower Burnt Chute. Man, got nice out. Awesome, awesome day. How's that portage, Kyle? It was good. Stories. It was good. The second time was a little easier than the first. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's beautiful, beautiful forest in there. Yeah. Like, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. You know, the yeah. big, like, especially when you start getting into the coniferous and then back into the hardwoods. You see those two, like, rotted out old white pines that were all yeah. kind of punky, like, habitat sort of. Definitely, like, getting to be a pretty old forest through here, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel like beautiful. maybe they didn't cut here because it's too much of a pain in the ass to get the logs into the river. You know, like, that would, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know. In the boat. In the boat. Come on, bud. Go on, in the boat. There you go, boy. That's it, man. Lie down. Lie down. Oh, this is walleye heaven. Yeah. Uh, even here would be a little wally hole here, eh? Oh, yeah. She drops off. We are approaching the last rapids of the trip. Hardly really a rapid. It's oh, called really? Love Sit Rapids. It's more of a swift, eh, Kyle? Yeah, compared to what we have been doing. Yeah, this is like hilarious. This is just fun. So do you want to take it hard left through that V there? Yeah, yeah sure. All right, far right might be more fun because then we could go right by the cliff. Buddy, you're steering the boat, yeah, man. Let's go, let's go far right. Look, go. left looks too easy. Yeah. Over here, we might, we might, you know, might be more of a rush. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
It's beautiful. I've come up right in here with my motor before, crossing the boon like my lake. You never get that kind of shit because it's only fed by snow runoff and little creeks, right? Yep. Well, that's about all she wrote. Finished not one boat on this gorgeous uh, lake. Absolutely perfect conditions. Not a ripple other than the ones made by our canoe out here and jumping fish. And uh, so we're gonna bang off about the last two clicks of this and finish up Bennett's Bay. Give my wife Tori a shout. And uh, that's about all she wrote for this trip. So another great one in the books. Nice. I took a barge about this size across uh, Panache Lake with my drill on it. <laughs> oh, here we are, the final few paddle strokes. We did it. Paddle tap, buddy. Jump free. Uh, jump free. Hey, hon. Hi. Sorry, you're in the video. Perfect. Yeah, I'm hey. not really dressed for that. Mm, you look hot. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm nervous happy to see you. I see the kiddos. Is Wesley sleeping? No, he just woke up. There nice. they are. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, baby. Hey, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes. oh. oh there That was a bad, bad move. Startling. Oh, was he? Jeez, how's, how's everything been? A disaster or what? What do you got for us there, honey? A couple of Yeah! Amazing. Well, one's for Kyle, but... Kyle! Special delivery, buddy. 